March 15 marked the beginning of one of the fiercest and longest lockdown periods across the Philippines that significantly slowed down the economy. Aside from the healthcare dilemma brought by the coronavirus, industries like tourism, hospitality, and food services took a hit, but it affected the Filipino working population the most. The Philippine Statistics Authority reported 7.3 million people unemployed just this April. The unemployment rate reached an all-time high with 17.7%, which rose as compared to just three months prior in January with 5.3%. With unemployment reaching staggering heights and millions of Filipinos depending on the government for financial aid and other means of capitalizing in the situation, these solutions can only go so far. People are losing jobs, sales are crashing, everything's on hold. So, how are Filipinos coping? Online selling spans businesses operating through the internet, social media, or online shopping platforms. Imagine entering a mall that sells clothes, food, furniture, and practically anything you can think of, all within the reach of your fingertips. While the industry has long been booming prior to the pandemic, Filipinos have come to build their own as an alternative source of income to sustain their households. COVID-19 has brought about the resiliency of the Philippines, with over 41% turning to e-commerce for livelihood. Let's take a look at how some Filipinos are doing it. We interviewed Luis Sevilla of Sevilla & Sons on how their business was built upon the call to its necessity in the current situation. In 2014, his mother's passion for cooking led to the establishment of a business that manufactured sausages. A factory produces its meat, is sold through an online store, and shipped to customers. When the coronavirus hit, Sevilla & Sons was able to find a way past the socio-economic turmoil and pull through by using one of the biggest tools of modern times, social media. Since Luzon accounts for 73% of the country's GDP, and also the majority of those unemployed, sellers have turned to online technology to meet the market demand for products. In the country deemed the social media capital of the world, it seems like a breezy task, but how did they start out? One of the business owners we interviewed mentioned how she wanted to use her time productively and be able to generate an income while still pursuing her passion to help others who are in need. She mentions that she was able to learn more about social media and the various ways she is able to maximize it to market her products. As we interviewed these online sellers, it's evident that businesses at a time like this are less likely to prosper if not for the power of social media. It serves as their main lifeline in marketing their products while establishing a bridge between trustworthy customers and buyers. The benefits of online selling are among the following. Lower setup and running costs, its ability to be operated anywhere, less time intensive, a wider consumer market, and an overall better cash flow. In a time where going out is limited and people are stuck at home, the market is now online. However, those residing in areas not in the national capital region have found that online selling is slightly more difficult, as transactions are mainly happening in central Luzon. We can all assume that the COVID-19 outbreak will have a lasting communal effect, especially in terms of e-commerce for us Filipinos. For business owners, this can mean a surge in essential and luxury goods such as food and beverages, healthcare items, home necessities, and apparel. In return, people are able to possess goods usually bought through traditional shopping. We need consistency, long-term plans, and ventures that will sustain the country for the entirety of the pandemic and possibly for years to come. Will this change how businesses operate even long after the pandemic? We'll see.